on what this bill does. As we have heard in Congress, this bill allegedly codifies the federal law that allegedly allows for phasing. I would challenge anyone in support of this bill to get up after me and cite the federal law. I challenge you because there is no federal law. There is no federal law. I invite the individual in support to stand after me and cite the federal law. Point number one. In his testimony before the respective committees, the Department of Transportation justified the passage of this proposal because, and I quote, Senate Bill 1171 will make Hawaii law consistent with the National Historic Preservation Act, Section 106, comma 36 CFR Section 800.4, paren B, paren 2, paren 2010. DOT went on to say this bill would make state historic preservation laws consistent with federal historic preservation laws. I challenge the individual who will stand up next in support of this bill to defend that position. The fact is, the fact is, Senate Bill 1171 will not bring any consistency between federal and state historic preservation laws. The Department of Transportation is confused in its definition of the terms statute, law, regulations, and rules. And like Mark Maple Sir, they have poured it on each of us. A statute or law is an act of the legislature that declares, prescribes, or commands. A regulation or rule describes how the statute or law will be implemented. In this case, the applicable federal statute cited is Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, which says in its entirety, Section 106, Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, <coughs> comment on federal undertakings. The head of any federal agency having direct or indirect jurisdiction over a proposed federal or federally assisted undertaking in any state, and the head of any federal department or independent agency having authority to license any undertaking shall, shall, prior to the approval of the expenditure of any federal funds on the undertaking or prior to the issuance of any license, as the case may be, take into account the effect of the undertaking on any district, any site, any building, any structure, or any object that is included in or eligible for inclusion in the National Register. The head of any such federal agency shall afford the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation established under Title II of this Act a reasonable opportunity to comment with regard to such undertaking. The federal statute says nothing, zero, only, squat, about faith reviews. Nothing, only, zero, squat. 
or that for that matter, facing of any kind. That language is found only within the much more detailed implementing regulation for Section 106 at 36 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 800. You may check it for yourself. And the presumption is the person who stands in support after me has done so. Because he will be asked by me. Unless Congress is planning to amend Section 106 of the NHPA, passage of this bill will not make state law consistent with federal law. Because phasing does not exist in federal law. To say the DOT is confused is to be kind. <laughs> this is nothing more than a taking by the state executive in response to a Supreme Court decision entitled Kaleki. That's all it is. Yep. You can fluff it up any which way you want. If it quacks, it's a duck. And this is a duck. When the Supreme Court's ruling on Kalekini was handed down in August 2012, August 2012, the executive branch of this government could have and should have immediately begun to amend the existing administrative rules at Hawaii Administrative Rules 13-275 and 13-284. Had they done so expeditiously, it is highly likely that the necessary amendments will be in place by now. Allowing for phased project reviews that the DOT alleges it needs. Instead, instead, the executive branch inexplicably Delay taking action, any action, until the beginning of this session. And SB 1171 is the disingenuous action taken by the executive to suggest that phasing is necessary when it is not. The fact of the matter is, no matter what anybody says after I'm done, this legislation is not necessary. The rules under Hawaii Administrative Rules provides the Department of Transportation with all necessary rulemaking authority. And if somebody can tell me differently, I'm here. You know, when I started this, on this bill, I thought we'd have a discussion about the Aina Ivi Kupuna. It's not about that. That's only the reason we shouldn't do it. What it's about is being led to believe that this is so critical that highways cannot be built. That's not true. And I just explained why. So critical that this bill is so proud, so vague, 
that this allows for private developments to move forward. This is not about highways. This is about everything. That broad, that big. And so boho. When this can be done. So boho. When the water park is delivered to us. It's not for people like Sarah Collins. Most of you know Sarah, you've been around long enough to weigh in on the distinguishments of the law. We'll be flying this bill through because without it, cannot build highways. No, no. Hawaii's administrative rules. O oi, ke kai kia aina. Hana oi. Get your work done. I thought I'd use this bill as a, an attack on our culture, an attack on the host culture. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. We could be in Yapana. And if the rules existed there as they do here, we wouldn't have to talk about the evil. Because it's not necessary. It's only another example of the erosion of the host culture which politicians use every time they run about.
Phase identification and evaluation for alternatives under consideration consist of corridors or large land areas or where access to properties is restricted, the agency officially may use a phased process to conduct identification and evaluation efforts. So we're both reading the same statutes, but obviously having very different interpretations. And I argue that this clearly, in federal law, allows for phasing. And we're simply making the laws locally in congruence with that. And in the Clay Keeney versus Yoshioka ruling on page 65, footnote 33, the court suggested that Shifty amend its rules so that state laws would be consistent with the federal law in the National Historic Preservation Act. And that is exactly what their justice has recommended and exactly what we're about to do this morning. For decades, it has been a common practice to build projects in phases. This bill simply puts that practice in statute. If the state had a sketchy track record of desecrated historical sites, there may be reason for us to pause. But the opposite is true. The state has been an excellent steward of the land and has a record of preserving important cultural sites. Here's an example of projects that have been phased in around the state. On Oahu, Kahikili Highway, Kalaniamoli Highway, Farrington Highway, on the Big Island, Hawaii Belt Road, Volcano Road, Kuakini Highway, on Maui, Haleakala Highway, Honopi'ilani Highway, Hana Highway, on Molokai, Kamehameha 5 Highway, Mauna Loa Highway, Kalei, Kalei Highway, on Lanai, Kaumala Haupua, excuse me, Ka Kaumala Hau Highway, on Kauai, Kamuali'i Highway, and Kuhio Highway. It would be ideal if the feds would bankroll our entire projects once they are approved, but the reality is that funding on federal projects rolled in over several years. Sometimes we don't all own all the land we need to develop in the beginning, so we need to develop in managed bites or phases. If this bill is not passed, there will be delays in construction, construction of new facilities or master planned projects. Just this morning, the Attorney General indicated there is a likelihood that projects already in the pipeline could wind up back in court. On your desk, you have a list of potential projects that could stop in its tracks very soon if there is further, further litigation. And all of these roads are highways that are coming to a neighborhood near each and every one of you. And it's not just transportation projects. As the previous speaker had mentioned, it includes renewable energy, architecture, art, excuse me, agricultural projects, and school expansion. The Department of Hawaiian Homelands has had master plan communities phased in. DBED's efforts to expand broadband, geothermal, seawater air conditioning would all be hampered. Even the Office of Hawaiian Affairs would likely have to phase in their master plan for their 25 acres in Kaka'ako that was given to them last year. They don't have the money to do an entire plan all at once. Some opponents argue that doing an archaeological inventory survey at the start of an entire project could alleviate problems down the road if a project has to be redirected in a subsequent phase. If we're going to contemplate hypothetical situations, I could also argue that comprehensive AIS at the start could cause more problems and cost more money. All projects don't turn out as initially planned. A road could be realigned or funding of a project could force developers to scale back their project. If you dig in an area that ultimately never gets developed, you just disturbed remains that didn't need to be touched and put money into a study that was not useful. That is a waste of time and resources. A comprehensive EIS is the beginning of a, de at a beginning of a de development. Doesn't guarantee there will be no problems later. An EIS is like hunting in the dark. You may hit your target, but oftentimes you come away empty-handed. This bill is not about being disrespectful. There are no exemptions. If a survey identifies any burial sites, the project comes to an immediate halt. This bill is about allowing progress to occur as it has for decades, and at the same time being very respectful of sacred sites around the island. I encourage my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you, Madam President. Further discussion, members. Senator Thiebaud. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to raise uh, two points. One, in our, I'm sorry, I rise in opposition to this bill. Please proceed. And I'd like to raise two points. Uh, the first, to address the comments that were just made by the senator to my left and the second to add to the comments from uh, Senator um, Kahalu. 
I heard um, the previous speaker mention that federal law does authorize phasing where the proposed project consists of corridors or large land areas or access to the properties is restricted. But this bill in front of us today adds a third category where it would allow a phased archaeological inventory survey where circumstances dictate that construction be done in stages. That's an extremely broad exemption to the existing practice. What does that mean? Is that going to apply to developments on relatively small footprints of land because the construction is done in stages? even when you can conduct an archaeological inventory survey relatively easily? Is that going to apply when private developers are developing areas when they're concerned that a portion of the land contains burials and they want to begin the phased archaeological inventory <coughs> surveys in the regions that are less likely to contain burials or historic sites in order to get their preliminary approvals? This is an extremely broad exemption, and it sounds to me like that is nowhere in the federal law. So once again, we are having, similar to Senate Bill 1207, the Department of Transportation come in here and talk about a very broad-based exemption that is not necessary, and it's going to lead to a lot of consequences that I think many people in this room are going to regret. I want to add also to the remarks of the Senator from Kahalu, Allowing a phased archaeological inventory survey is going to change the process by which the approvals are done. And I'm speaking as the former chair of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Prior to project approval, if burials are found during an inventory survey, the determination on whether they should be removed or remain in place, the determination on the type of mitigation, the determination on the type of response, is made by the burial councils. Once the project is approved, that determination is made by the State Historic Preservation Division. And I can tell you what will happen is if a phased AIS is allowed, a project is approved, and down the line, your survey comes about and something is found, and there's been a lot of money spent on a project, there's been construction that's been started, the pressure that is going to be placed on that administrative determination by the State Historic Preservation Division, they're going to be asked and pressured to consider the economic impacts of their decision. And they have to reach a different decision than if that decision is made prior to the project approval by the burial houses. If we pass this bill, we are going to be changing not just the process, but who will be making the decisions. So I ask you to please consider that and oppose this measure. We can come back with a much narrower measure next year if it is necessary, or the department can engage in administrative rulemaking and go through a more thoughtful and lengthy process than we have the luxury of doing here during such a short session. Mahalo. Will you ask the uh, Senate member from Salt Lake if he will yield to a question? What is your question? The question is Did the Hawaii Supreme Court suggest in the Kalekini decision that the legislature change the law? or that shifting, amend its rules? And if the answer is, the Supreme Court did not suggest the legislature change the law, but suggested that shifting amend its rules, will you ask him if we are members of shifting? Thank you. Senator McCoy, do you yield to that question? Senator has declined to appeal. And I rise in opposition. Please proceed. Yet again. I only do so to clarify reckless comments. 
by the Senate member who spoke in support of this measure. He alleges that the state, in his remarks, when it came to the, the, the topic of desecration of the land, he stated, the state has been an excellent steward of the land. Really? Maybe he can elucidate and share with us how Kukuyokane Ea is no longer in existence. Really? The state is an excellent steward. It's hard for me to even speed it up of the land. Those kind of comments are inappropriate when they're not true. The state might try to be an excellent steward. But it needs to try harder. <coughs> Ask political activity. Ask those descendants whose bones over a thousand were unearthed in 1988 at Honakawa. Ask them. Ask the descendants whose bones were unearthed at Walmart. Ask the descendants whose bones were unearthed at General Growth. Ask the descendants whose bones are being unearthed at Kahuku Plantation Village 5. Ask them. What a good steward the state has been. Those comments are not necessary because they're not true. What is true is the Supreme Court suggested Shifting amend its rules. We should not follow the advice of the Supreme Court and ask Shifting to amend its rules. I pointed them out to you. That's where the discussion should be held. The uh, speaker in support rattled off a list of highways that have already been built. So many, so I could only recall Kahekili, because I live at the end of Kahekili, and Han, because I'm fond of Han. But in between that was a whole list. <laughs> it begs the question, if those highways could be built, can future highways continue to be built? And if the state requires assistance through administrative rules, why not do what the Supreme Court says? Amend the rules. And that's really what's important. We can always pass laws. But this is not necessary. What is necessary, in the state's eyes, on the advice of the Supreme Court, is to have Shifty amend its rules. And so that's what they should do. And save us the offensive remarks of Native people about the excellent stewardship of the state of Hawaii on the Aina Ivi Kupuna.
Outside and we'll get some uh, reaction. <laughs>
171 passes. Sixteen to nine. So there was some changes of votes today. Let's see if we can get some uh, reaction from people here. Hey. Uh, oh, that's right. Were you here for this? You know, there were actually some vote changes, but not enough. You want to give us your your uh, live on the internet? Give us your reaction. No. <laughs> okay. Let me get one. Let me come here and get some reaction. how important uh, money, profit, economy, all those things are. So what we're seeing is <clears throat> what's going to be happening to Hawaiians, what's going to be happening to the future generations of Hawaiians. <clears throat> As the Hawaiian community becomes less and less important to the overall economy of the state. Beginning of the year in this building, we were very upset about what is happening to our environment. And how our environment was being attacked in order for us to keep the economy of this crazy spiral that is going on in Hawaii, to keep that afloat. We were willing to sacrifice much of our, of our um, environment. And there was the whole battle over the PLDC. And we had battles over what they were doing with our lands for farming. And we all know that we only have a couple weeks of food left in Hawaii, yet they're willing to sacrifice our best farmlands to bring more and more people. Today we just saw what happens when we, when we put up Hawaiian <laughs> values that are deep within the Hawaiian community regarding our elders and the bones of our kupuna. And you guys heard the arguments. The people who were supporting this bill were embarrassed by the reality and the truth of what this bill was all about. And yet, like good soldiers, the vote was all decided yesterday. So no matter what we say, no matter what the arguments are on the bottom, these things are decided without the voice of the people being heard. All I know is we cannot and we will not give up. Right. 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 Fourth floor, fifth floor, I don't know what floor the governor is on. He's the guy that directed this whole thing today. Right. Him and his DOT department. Took off the face mask and you saw developers and everybody else behind that DOT face mask. Hanabusa said she's not going to run against him. So he feels safe. What we must do next is not just say, okay, we lost it today. We need to go upstairs and confront that man. We need to get involved in politics and the election of that guy. Otherwise, it's going to happen to you, the next generation, and the next generation over and over. We need to get involved in this building. All of you being here today was really, really good. We had a really good shot at this. But we cannot just come once. So first of all, mahalo nui to everybody who came. Mahalo, mahalo nui.
don't trust the regular media. They don't give you any information anyway. Keep in touch with one another. And we'll make the call on when we're going to visit upstairs to try and get him not to sign this horrible bill that was just passed today. You guys all heard, you guys now need to spread the information. You heard firsthand what the arguments were on both sides. Spread the truth. Okay? Spread the truth. And be ready to come back again and fight another day. Right? Yep. So, the lady that really started all of this, I like to call her to come up. And we give one heartfelt to Kumau Mau. Oh, unless you want to say something first. Nope. And let's leave this building with all of us speaking together about moving together forward all in one group. Iku mau mau, iku mau mau mau, iku holo holo, iku la na mau, iku mau, iku la na mau, iku 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 mau,